We're going to talk about these three Two Vets tripods. I don't get shit from Two Vets, so this isn't an advertisement. This is just me saying that I've tested a lot of shit this last year, and I'm starting to put it down into video format to tell you what I like and don't like about the gear that I'm using and running and what I would change and what I would improve on. So this has nothing to do with Two Vets, despite the fact that it's three of their tripods being compared against one another. I really love them, and if you want to just cut to the chase, my go-to right now is the Recon. Although the QDT has some advantages, the Recon works just as, just as well, and I'm able to do things just as quickly if I want to get high, low, and collapse in and out. So for me, my go-to uh, is the Recon. But let's take a closer look at how these work. Check these out. This is the, uh, the three main two vets tripods that I have and use regularly. I use these all the time. I've got an old 40 mic, and I'm not sure they even make those anymore. Got the Recon, and you can see there I've got a really right stuff ball head on it. I don't know what the model is, but the, um, the ball head itself just screws right on. Works perfect. And then I've got the QDT. If I back up a little bit, you can see that uh, fully collapsed. There are different heights. All right, one clear advantage that the QDT has is that fully collapsed, it's still pretty tall. I don't know the exact dimensions, but as you can see, let's say we were going to shoot over this bench here. Fully collapsed, I could deploy this tripod and be able to throw a bag on it, and it would be able to shoot over this type of obstacle. So when it comes down to time and height, you get an advantage with the QDT. On the other hand, if you need to go short, you're gonna run into the same issues as another tripod might to go up and down. But one of the problems I had with earlier models of both of these tripods were that there wasn't a lever on the inside to release how the legs folded and collapsed, right? You had to pinch this thing and pull it out, right? With like with the 40 mic. But this, if I grab it and my finger comes around behind it, I can push it out and extend it. And in fact, if I get really antsy, I can push it forward and it'll lock up and I'm able to maneuver this leg uh, very easily. And so uh, adding that feature to both of the legs of the QDT and the Recon allow me to be able to manipulate these tripod legs very quickly in terms of the angle that they're positioned at. And that makes these very quick to adapt to the scenario, adapt to the terrain that you're on. And right now, obviously we're at a range but i like the idea of saying okay you need to shoot over this you know if it's a boulder or a bush obviously this is going to work very quickly but if i need to collapse this down say and shoot under the table it's very quick to grab these levers and adjust the height of the bipods or a height of the tripod so that i can get into whatever the position might demand right where as uh, shooting over it with the recon, right? I've got to pop out the legs, which is very easy to do. Uh, it's kind of the reverse of the QDT. So whether it's adjusting up or down or left or right, there's going to be pros and cons to the height. I think um, maybe in PRS style competitions with 90 second stages, you could have an advantage with a longer leg because you're able to use it as a rear support without adjusting it. If you're talking about, you know, essentially hip height and lower, otherwise you're going to have to open up and extend the leg anyway. So I think the advantage of having a long leg here would be isolated to those specific competitions where you're stuck under 90 seconds and you have to deploy it on the clock. Otherwise, um, you're gonna end up having to adjust your QDT just as much as anything else because it's, it's you're talking about half the shooting field that you're in um, up and down, you're gonna end up adjusting the legs one way or another. You know, both of these end up being in the kneeling position. One's just higher than the other. And I can uh, take my shooting bag and show you that the high kneeling of the QDT and the lower kneeling 
of the recon. Uh, either way, I'm shooting from the kneeling position and they shoot just as consistently. What I'm concerned about is ease of adjustment. So let's just check out what this does from uh, standing to prone, clipped in. We'll see how fast we can adjust it. My clip in and um, what we should see is you know the ease of movement and the wobble zone and i'm going to shoot one of these zero targets on my craft data sheet but these are the kinds of tests that i like to do so we'll um we'll see what happens my uh, staple gun here, of course that's off. Pull the bag in to the center. All right, taking a look at the results of the comparison between the Recon and the QDT, I noticed something that was pretty interesting. First of all, uh, I ended up going through the entire craft challenge to compare the two. And um, this is just a training load, so it's nothing like particularly amazing about its uh, shootability. But comparing the two, we can see a couple things. I know that always, whenever I clip in to the ball head and I get in a kneeling position, I always go a little bit high left. And so we see that here. 
And when I took this out and shot another group with a bag on top, it was straight up. So whatever I do with the ball head kneeling uh, fucks things up, but I try to be consistent and went between the two. Uh, I isolated my positions. We've been working on the positional isolation craft target. Uh, and then I combine them and we'll see that here in a second to show the difference between the shootability of the recon clipped in and then the QDT. And I threw a bag on the QDT uh, because what I wanted to test was the stability in low positions. And my hunch was that with the long legs, I would get a little bit more bounce. And that's what we're seeing here. Uh, my standing and kneeling were center and my seated and prone had vertical bounce because those legs are so long in a low position, it's kind of cantilevered and I couldn't get it to not vibrate up and down. And when we look at the group analysis, we use the Riflecraft website to do some of the group analysis. We can see that the numbers, although the group sizes are pretty close, the actual number analysis that the Riflecraft website does shows that there's a clear advantage to how I shot on the QDT or on the, the recon versus the QDT.